Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have All some right. fun. Well, Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got a project that I have no idea whether it's going to work or not. But uh, the guy wants me to try, and uh, so here we go. Uh, what we've got is a splined shaft, right? Normally that would be no problem, but there's a spline on the inside too. And what he wants is to make this spline bigger. <laughs> Except, uh, and so we're going to look down here in a minute. Uh, we're going to cut the spline off of this hub and cut this part of the spline off and then weld a spline onto it. Now, can we stay centered? I don't know. Uh, but uh, one thing I did, and I, I'll go get that tool here. Hang on. Because once the once this part is off, uh, we no longer have a reference for what for the centered spline, and this has got to be, you know, the gnat's ass. So what I did is I built a uh, mandrel to go inside of the larger spline, and of course that's on the lathe right now, and we'll look at that in a second. So the mandrel slides down the spline and all of this was cut on centers so this and this and this are all true to each other whether that works or not and then by the way this slides down onto the spline and starts to tighten up right about there and so we get a nice snug fit it's about oh I don't know quarter you know two tenths of a taper in this three inches so uh, that's the job uh, let's go down and see what we've got here and we'll go from there now you can see inside there there's a spline and what he wants me to do is to cut this out get rid of the hub square up the spline build a negative and positive press fit and press it onto that shaft that I showed you a second ago. Then once it's pressed on, adjust it and then weld it in place. Well, uh, all we can do is try, right? So okay. first thing we got to do is cut this hub off. I've squared the hub up this way and squared it up this way and so now we're just going to go in and slowly um, cut that hub off. So let's get started. I got aluminum pads in there and it just grabbed and uh, and uh, slid around on the aluminum. So we're not going to be able to do it that way, obviously. And I can't grab it too much tighter with anything else because uh, the uh, this is a, a bearing surface and we can't touch it. So. We're going to take this out. <sighs> oh, 
Okay, I got it. We can put this in and get it squared up that way. So for now, I think what we're going to do is take this and go ahead and and hand crank it or hand saw it, which is the only way I can think to cut this thing. There's no way to hold it. Let's see how that's going to work. <laughs> didn't touch it. Let's try this. Well, that, that got it. It's a little coarser blade. Alright, we're going to move you out of the way here, and uh, we'll come back when uh, it's sawn. Okay, so we got the thing sawn, and now we're chucked it up in the small lathe here, and we're just going to square it up and see what we got left. Okay, that gives us a good square edge to work from. Let's see what we've got. Now when we were laying this whole thing out with the customer sitting there because, you know, he had has the plan, I'm just kind of following along with what he wants to do. Uh, he came to uh, 5 inches 840 thousandths total length which takes us to there and we guessed that this line here would be the mating point and I'm seeing that that's pretty close I'm gonna take this out and reset it we don't we're not concerned with square or anything at this point. Okay, so there's that part. If we come in all the way to there, We're just a bit shy of hitting that line. That's not bad. Okay. So that means we come in just a little bit, like an eighth of an inch this side of the line, and we'll cut that off and square it and throw this part away and this part will go up against this part and there'll be plenty of room to do a uh, male female mating so let's take this over to the big lathe because this little guy's you know weak as a kitten all right we're down to the spline Okay, there's the grooves of the spline. Let's just see if we can take a hacksaw and take the rest of that off.
Done deal. Okay, so now I think what I want to do is just square this up, not touching this part here, but just getting that squared up. Okay, we got that off. Now we need to come up with that other part. Not sure what I did with it. It's laying around here somewhere. All right, we're going to have to hunt it down. Okay, so uh, we've got this thing set up finally, and I don't know if you can see it because of the reflection, but uh, we're sitting within a half a thou of everything at this moment so time to turn the machine on and keep working our way down now we need to take this off almost to the blue line so that's uh, that's a bit of cutting, and I want to do this so that I don't lose my my uh, setting. So I think what I'm going to do is just start taking off this surface and working my way in slowly, because as soon as I hit those splines, this thing gets thrown off. So. Okay, we're we've got a bit of a shoulder going here. Now what we need to do is take it down to about the size of the outside of the spline. So that's going to go there. And the outside of the spline is 1559, so we want to go just a little bit bigger. And let's continue on. Okay, so now we've got this edge squared up and this edge squared up. 
Now we need to come in and put a 45 down this so we can get a good weld in there. So, let's go ahead and do that. This is all set to go. Alright, so now let's take this out. save our chips and we've got a a stub ready to go now we got to figure out how to get this in here and get it straightened out oh right that's what this is all about so this thing slides in right up to that point and that and we've got our our two edges to work from. Finally. Okay. We'll just snug these down just a little bit. So, oh, nope, nope, we got to get some uh, chips in there. straight
we're going to have to mess with this a bit. We'll be back. Okay, we've got both of these squared up. And I realized that I could take a reading from this edge here and from this edge here. So, that's set. We can go ahead and surface this first. Damn, it looks pretty straight. Okay, so now we've got ourselves a nice straight edge that we can that we can go from and uh, I think probably the best thing to do let's see what we got we're gonna bring this down this down to this size here I think that's our next step Okay, we got that part. We're down to size. Let's bring it up here and have a look. So that looks pretty good. Now what we need to do is cut a um, just a little step in that spline back so that this can press fit. This little edge can press fit into that and get ourselves a good square edge going. So, uh, first thing we want to do is make sure we're still square. That's looking good. Now we're going to get a bo little boring bar. a little low to me looks a lot low to me let's bring it over here see what we come up with and that's high that might be something I like using the little steel rule trick. Just bring it up against. And if that steel rule is level, and boy, it looks like it pretty much is, then we're set. Okay, so now bring this over and we're going to take it in just a bit.
Okay, now we got to figure out where we're at here. I was, what I was looking at was an inside micrometer. And uh, I only have a one inch. We need a two. So we're going to have to do this the oh, old fashioned way. But, you know, I'm old school anyhow, so that's not a bad thing. Let's see if we've got a smaller one of these. It's a bit smaller. And this works, you just have to be a lot more careful. Okay, that's about it right there. Get out the two inch micrometer. There it is right there. And we are looking at 575, 586. And our measurement here is Five seventy five, five eighty four and a half. Hmm. So that's a two thousandths press right there, supposedly. Although I'm not trusting it because it's not feeling like a press. We are so close. I think, uh, some heat on this and keeping this chilly this thing will slide right into place so right now what we're going to do is v this all right i think we're far enough in at this point but let's make sure 130 yeah no problem all right so this wants to go inside of that and we're going to hope, oh look at that, it almost holds on its own. There it is, look at that. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we need to taper that.
and I think this part of this whole process is done I'm feeling just a bit of an edge right there maybe just a kiss with the file not even spin it Take this out and we got ourselves pretty well set up where we need to be I think that's good there's plenty of meat on this by the time we weld this there's gonna be a shitload of meat on this so no problem so I think what we're gonna do is leave this cold warm this up a bit and it should just drop into place and if it doesn't we've got the press to deal with All right, so let's warm this up. Give that a try. Right down, right where it's supposed to go. Now I'm going to put a little pressure on it. Just to keep it honest, we'll just let her cool off that way see what we come up with well okay uh, I <laughs> I got to the end there and spent probably oh I don't know it must have been an hour and a half could have been two hours trying to set those two pieces up so that they fit and they were concentric with one another and I finally got it all dialed in I mean we're literally an hour and a half and then uh, I was so excited about getting it uh, that I grabbed the tor welder and just welded it up and didn't turn the camera on so uh, you missed that part sorry uh, but here's our piece it's done and the way I had to weld it is uh, I it just did little spots on all sides just to keep it concentric and uh, so now this goes into this transmission and then uh, this uh, transfer box goes on so this goes on here like that Mm-hmm. And then our <clears throat> our seal goes in there like that. And the bearing goes on this part right here. So and uh, what this does is uh he is he has a uh yacht or a sailboat. Uh, down in Mexico and he wanted to transfer 
the gas engine or the diesel engine and that's on the front of this transfer case or this uh, transmission and it comes through the transfer case then it's going to go to the electric motor so he's got a gas motor and an electric motor <clears throat> and we are set to go here um, so that was quite a job and uh, this is Nick Collier checking out